So, yeah, the microphone works, and um, I'll welcome you to my talk. It's about the tools for translators. And yeah, my name is Christian Lohmeyer. You probably know me by my nick, C L O P H or Glove. And yeah, I'm employed by the GDF as the release manager and also as infrastructure administrator. And I'll be around, well, I still will see the slide. Some power saving or? Yeah, and uh, I'll hang around at the social events, and if you have uh, personal questions, you can approach me and ask. So, but I think I'll need some more setup time to maybe create some power to the adapter. Uh, just a few seconds. Let's see. to adjust. So hopefully you now it's stable. And yeah, what was, yeah, feel free to approach me. But I'm bad with names, so don't be offended if I don't remember what your name is. I'll forget the next day, so just approach me and ask what you have to ask. So and I'll start with a short overview, and then I'll tell you how I go from a string in Poodle where it's unclear how it should be translated to finding the way where it is used in the code and by that finding out what it is supposed to do and then clarifying what the translation should be. So basic features of Poodle include uh, the, a direct link to the unit that is to be translated and uh, please always when you report a problem with Poodle make sure to copy that link and uh, reference it in your mail and just uh, make sure that it's included in your mail and not only writing, I have the string problem with this source string and then it's very hard to find out. For example, all, so if you only copy the link in the browser, that's right now filtered for strings that have suggestions, this changes, so if I click the link two days after you posted it, it might be a completely different page I get. But if you use the direct unit link, it's always the same unit that it is linked to. Think of it as, it is as a permalink to a translation. Then there's also a report a problem link that will send to a hostmaster list currently. So if there's a problem with the English string, like for example a bad XML or just something unclear or contradicting information, post it to the uh, Hostmaster list, and then we'll fix it in the in the source code to have it updated on the next update of the templates. Next one is Pootle also offers the possibility to add a terminology. So it's a separate project in Pootle where you can define some strings that should always be translated the same way. So if you have, for example, file open, it should always be the same translation. You can add file there and open and it will show up whenever the strings appears in the, in the source. And also you can add additional languages if in English is not your primary language, if you're more fluent in Spanish for example, you can configure your account to display the Spanish strings in addition to the original source string, so it might be easier for you to translate from a different language instead of English. Or also to compare if there are some misunderstandings, unclear translations, how they did it, and maybe this gives you a hint about what the functionality should be. There was a bug when we initially deployed uh, Poodle, the version, where you couldn't actually configure additional locales because of a bug in Poodle, but this should be fixed. If you still have problems adding a definite uh, locale to your account, please let us know. And then there's a, a a category where people file the suggestions and uh, you have the option to either accept or reject them and review them. 
And right now, there's no way to send uh, feedback to the user who wrote the, the suggestions to basically give him a hint about why his suggestions wasn't uh, used. But this is uh, something that will be fixed in the upcoming versions we will deploy. So then you can send uh, uh, basically instructions to the user to make better suggestions the next time. Yeah, and uh, also we have uh, special translations called a key ID. And when you install a development build, or for example, a build from the Tinderbox, the daily builds, you can choose, uh, select the version to be the key ID language. It has the shortcut FQTZ. And this will then prefix a unique ID in front of every string that you can then use in the Poodle search interface to locate the string. So if you have a development version installed, you can easily point out which string it is. So you have your regular version in your own locale and see something that's not translated and it's not obvious where you would find that string in the uh, Poodle interface or in what file it is. You just open your development version in the key ID language and just open the same dialog or the same menu look for the ID and then search with that in Poodle. Yeah, and also there's a feature you got with the change history, at least for master project. So this will record any changes made to the string so you can see what was a previous translation if there's a misunderstanding or a complaint about a string not being translated differently. You can see who it was and ask the person why he did it. Maybe there was a good reason for it. And yeah. Right now, when we will split off the five two projects, those that information will get lost, unfortunately. So you only have the history on the master project and not in the individual release branch versions. Yeah. And Additionally, to the uh, suggestions that come from the Poodle instance itself, we also use uh, the remote uh, translation memory uh, that is called Amagama. And it also offers a website where you can query individual strings to compare what is, is there. There have been some complaints that the data might be out of date and old strings are suggested. And right now, there's no way to delete strings from there. So it's planned to also use a Poodle local translation memory where only strings from our instance from LibreOffice are used. But the, right now it's using the remote one. So whenever that something goes uh, async, uh, pops up asynchronously, this is something what, that was from Amagama. So now uh, to the example I wanted to show you on how to locate an unclear string and Hopefully, this would also help you if the, you encounter something that's unclear at the first look. Yeah, for example, I'm using the German project, and there's a string checkout that is currently translated with the string upmelden, which means log off. But this sounds fishy because usually, if it's log off, why isn't the English string log off? So that rings a bell, and so I try to find out is it the correct translation or does it mean something completely different? Because checkout could also be having a closer look at something and similar stuff. So first thing to do is to look at the context information to see where the string comes from. In this case, it's from the uh, some of the low level mol use where there's not much difference in the, in the strings. Basically, Many strings are collected in one place that are not directly related to each other. Other, but I showed you. Nevertheless, an additional tool that might come handy, that is called OpenGrok. But first, look at the on the context information. You see that the file where the string comes from is the view.src, and with that, we can go to OpenGrok and uh, search for the file path view.src. This will show two hits. And from the info we have in, in Poodle, it's already clear that this was in the SFX project because that is also in the, in the path. Maybe you can see it for, for the file name. Libo UI SFX2 source view.po. So it's clear that is the, the top one. 
And if you open it, we see it's an alias string, so it's the bt underscore checkout string. That is the one that the actual code uses to refer to the string that is, in this case, checkout. So what we do is to just uh, copy the pt underscore checkout and paste it in the search box and do another search to get us to the actual implementation. And we, of course, get the match where it is uh, defined as the alias or the, the variable and the actual path to the implementation, in this case, the second one. So if you click on the string with the file number, uh, with the line number, it will also directly jump to the line number. And then in this case, I scrolled up a little, you see at the uh, bottom the line 1470 is marked with a little uh, yeah, blue rectangle around it. This is the line where it's used. And if you look further up, you can see it's about checking out specific versions of a doc that is, for example, in the remote file storage like a Google Docs or Alfresco system or something like that. So logging off in this case is clear that is the wrong uh, translation because it means picking a specific version of a file to work with. So it comes to another feature of Poodle, meaning you can also add comments to make it clear that for other translators uh, stumbling upon the string that it's uh, for a specific purpose. In this case, I created the comment that it's not in the, tr in the meaning of logging out, but checking out a specific thing from uh, the file system. And I also marked the string fuzzy to make it easier to look for in the default uh, in default categories that you can browse strings with. Of course, uh, you don't have to use the OpenGrok web interface if you're also familiar with the code and have a local Git checkout already. You can also go use Git grab on the repository and basically follow the same steps and probably a little faster depending on how your network connection works out. Yeah, and do as you please, there are many ways to do it, but once you have the source file where the string comes from, you can also use the log functionality or the blame, as it's called, the annotation to see who actually did change a string or did add a string, so you know who, who you could ask uh, about a documentation for the functionality. If it's, for example, a new calc function and it was added by, let's say, Peter, you can ask Peter, I am not a mathematician. I don't know what, how the function is supposed to work. Can you write a small wiki article that trans translators could use, for example? So having the source not only helps for context by reading the code itself, but also finding out who to ask if there's still need for clarif clarification. Yeah, and uh, additional feature you could use is uh, to use the the included search functionality of Bootle, for example, if there's the view SRC might be a group of strings that belong together. So you can click on the, on the places link on the left-hand side in the, in the translation box to use a search on the view.src location and then Bootle will all, only show a, a, a list of the other strings that are defined in this file. So this might already be enough to get an idea where to look for that functionality, what it is supposed to do. But mentioned earlier, in this case, it's a pretty generic one. You see it has strings for printing in there as well, and probably it won't help for this specific example. There's also a big addition to the help translation that was done by Olivier, because in help you all only have the individual paragraphs and it might be hard to guess in what context it appears. So what he did is to have a website where the help file is rendered in your browser. And I did uh, the corresponding linkage to Poodle. So if you ha open a help uh, string, you have the additional string on the VM173 link. And if you click on that, a new tab, or it uh, it defaults to open in a new window, and then you get the corresponding help file where the string is used. And this probably also is a big help, especially for help. And yeah, 
as you probably heard in the other talks, help is something that will be changed more in the future because the help authoring extension became more usable and people just tried to improve help with other stuff, adding images and stuff like that. So help will change more in future than it used to be. And then finally, uh, you might have known that in the last years there has been progress to convert the dialogues in the LibreOffice from the fixed layouting stuff to using Glade based dialogues that resize automatically depending on how long a string is. And if it's a string that appears in the UI file, it's even easier. You don't even have to go to the code to open it, uh, to, to search for it. But you can open it from your installed version of LibreOffice. In this example for, for Linux, you would export the variable Glade catalog search path to the point to the shared Glade directory of the installation and then you can open the dialog using the Glade command. And this is example, I use the ASCII filter dialog and what you get is uh, the Glade window where there's a preview of the dialog and on the right hand side would be uh, the details for the control where it would dial in further to see what ID is used. And this way you can see the string in context. This is pre pretty easy to guess where it's used, how to go there from the UI, which menus you need to click to get there. And if need be, if you have a layout problem in that dialog, you could directly modify the dialog and check it out whether it works better after changing it and then create a corresponding patch for it. And uh, this basically concludes my short introduction and I is reserved some time for receiving feedback about Bootle, what things you like to have changed, what you like, yeah, and questions regarding the talk are welcome, of course, as well.